Hello, good evening back fans and uh, welcome to the uh, demonstration here. Well we're going to do sort of a revisited video on um, this. I've had a few requests in actually about carpet washers and uh, I thought well we haven't had this down for some time. It's probably been oh I don't know a good nine months since I had this down last. I uh, managed to dig out some more um, solution from my cupboard. I thought I'd used it, but um, I got a couple of bottles left in the back of the cupboard. You know how it is when you put all your cleaning stuff in your cupboards and you shove things to the back and then you think you've run out of it. And, uh, but yes, so what we're going to do today, we're going to sort of have a, another quick look at this. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of shampooing at, um, in this room and in the back room there. Now, I find that with the Bissell solution, um, it always looks nice when you've just done it, when it's still damp. But once it's dried, a few days later, you see all the stains start to come back through again. So I find really, I mean, it's alright for getting some of the dirt out, but it won't get uh, long, long-standing stains. Now, I wear a lot of black socks in this house. I, mean, I used to wear white socks years and years ago in the 90s, but... I wear black ones now and uh, it's really showing on this carpet, there's a lot of black stains, especially under the desk where I sit all the time. Um, there's like, it's permanently stained from where I wear black socks. I mean, I had a comment on there about, uh, Alex said to me, this is a pneumatic vacuum, why do you wear shoes in the house? And I said, well, I don't normally, it's just that uh, when I'm doing demonstrations where I'm going to get water down on the carpet or if I'm going to do a big mess test, then I'll have my shoes on. In the olden days, in 2014, I used to wear my shoes in the house all the time, but just wearing black socks still makes the carpet dirty. It's just a bad idea having beige carpets. Uh, I think when I have these replaced in due course, it won't be beige carpets that's going back down. I shall probably have darker carpets put in here because beige was not a good idea. But it's very expensive to have carpets put down, especially in a room this size where it's all going to be in one piece from front to back. Originally this house would have had um, two rooms, there would have been a room here, a staircase in the middle and a room at the front there, like in a standard terraced house, but unfortunately, well, they knocked it all through before I moved in here in 2001 and um, modified it and moved the staircase, which means that this room's a lot more expensive to heat in the winter, because it's a lot bigger and it goes up the staircase, and it's a lot more expensive to buy carpet for, because you've got to do both rooms and go up the stairs as well. Anyway, so this machine I bought, oh, when did I buy this now? This, this, the review of this originally went right back to the 2014 reviews that I did, so I, I bought this in 2014 because my old Vax one broke down. Uh, it, it was a Vax, so no more. That's what Vaxes do, they break down. Um, so I bought this then and I've used it a few times in between but I do find it gets through a lot of solution and I do find it gets through the water in the tank doesn't seem to last long if you forever keep uh, backwards and forwards to the sink to keep filling the tank up it's one of these tank in tank systems which has a bladder for the um, the solution and then underneath it or surrounding that bladder is where all the dirty water goes and we'll go into that in a second so it's, it's like a revisited video on this one where I'm just going to go into the machine again and then I will be doing another video afterwards where we will be using it effectively because I don't think I've done a demonstration video of this machine yet. So this machine I got on special offer uh, of course because I usually buy all my machines on special offer I never pay or try not to pay full price for a machine. I like to try and get them on half price or substantial uh, discount and uh, in that way, I can have more machines. If you spend, if I bought that uh, light bulb, for instance, for £339 that it's now on sale for, uh, I wouldn't have had enough money to afford that. I mean, that was £400 normally, that, that mailer there. I got that for £160. So you can get substantial savings if you're patient and you wait. It's no good going out and buying the first... When, it, when these first launched, they were, they were expensive, but obviously once they've been out a while, they tend to mark the prices down so you can get really good bargains. You've just got to keep your eye on the Argus catalogue all the time and I find on usually it's on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning of every week that they'll change prices. 
So if you go on Argos quite uh, early on in the day, on a Wednesday morning, you'll find they've changed the prices. So you've got to be quick in there, otherwise they sell out quite quickly. Right, so this, uh, this Bissell is able to wash carpets and it's able to wash upholstery because it, um, it has the hose on here. And um, the hose is permanently connected to the machine. Uh, it's not like the VAX where you have to like, take the hose off and then plug it in at the front. This one's permanently connected and all you have to do is switch a dial round to select between the floor and the tools mode. Um, so I had tried using this hose on the, again, a beige suite. What a stupid thing to do when, you, when you've got pets. Because I used to, have, years and years ago, I had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Uh, I had a dog in here and he made such a mess of walking along by the furniture and rubbing himself along there that there's all black stains all along the bottoms of the, um, the suite. And when I used to sit on this one here, it used to make the arms go black as well. And I tried shampooing the suite with this and it didn't do anything. You know, once, once beige furniture or beige carpet is stained, you just don't seem to be able to get it out and no amount of carpet shampoo seems to ever get it clean again. It makes it smell nice and it gets like the, the deeper down dirt out, but uh, it'd be interesting to see just how much uh, dirt this gets out, okay? Because I vacuum all the time, we'll see how efficient my vacuum cleaners are and how dirty the water is in this tank when we uh, empty the tank later on. <laughs> and uh, that'll be rather embarrassing if it comes out dirty, won't it? It'll prove that all these vacuum cleaners here aren't as good as I thought they were. But uh, anyway, what can we say about it first then? If I um, just show the hose function on there first before we sort of uh, get the camera down for close-up views because it's easier for me to do these sorts of things when it's up on the tripod there. So, what it does, um, basically, the hose joins into the back of the machine just here. And it comes down the, the sort of the arm here. In fact, it's just there. And it uh, joins into the top of the cleaner via two rubber uh, suction seals here. So if we recline it, and I think uh, that's the recline pedal. So what we have, the, the bottom of the hose actually comes out here, at this port here. And normally that wouldn't be open to the suction, because you're using it, aren't you? But when you've got it st stood in the upright position, that part there, that rubber seal, makes contact with this rubber seal down here. And that leads to the, uh, the diverter valve here. So you select it between the tools or floor cleaning on that dial and then it diverts the suction either to this port or down to the front. So when it's on the tools mode you feel the suction here. And when it's put in the upright position those two parts there meet up with each other and then that enables the suction through the hose. <clears throat> so here's the cable. We have on this machine rather a long cable. So there isn't hasn't been problems with it um, constantly being having to re be replugged. So there we are, nice generous length of cable there. I'd say there's probably eight metres there. Mm, hard to say actually, it's just kind of, kind of a measure or we'll walk in the front wing a bit. Yes, it's it's I, I, I would say that this is uh, that's a good uh, eight meters of cable that is, so that's pretty good. It does enter the machine down the bottom, but they do provide a cable hook up on the top of the handle here, so that you can just put your cable in there like so, which I do like. Right, so the hose itself is coiled onto the back of the cleaner here. Uh, to get it off, we undo that little clip downwards like so, and that enables it to come away from its storage. So it's a reasonably long hose on here, so you aren't forever like tugging at the machine. But one thing I will say is that uh, that is not that seal at the bottom of here is not the best. And if you're tugging it backwards like this, 
As you're moving it backwards, you hear that suction seal breaking here. As it, I can see it now as I'm moving it backwards, it actually uh, pulls this uh, joint apart. Because the handle is quite loose in the upright lock position, ideally, wherever you're working with it, you need to be having it like this, rather than tugging it backwards like that, because as you tug it backwards, all that's going to happen is you're going to be breaking that seal and the suction will keep stopping. So always have it that way on, if you're working on the chairs. So then, as you're pulling on the hose, you're not pulling that sailor part down the bottom. So then you can go across your furniture quite easily. It does come with the, um, the furniture nozzle on here. If I bring it up here now. <clears throat> so this is able to be removed, I think. Is it this little button here? Yeah, it is. So you can remove that to go and, uh, and clean it out. I'm not sure if it uh, disassembles any more than that because I've never really had to. So all you've got is your little uh, trigger just here. And as you pull that trigger, it sends the, the water, the, the, the cleaning solution out of this little uh, jet, this little spray nozzle here. So you spray it first of all, you press your nozzle in, you go backwards and you spray it onto your furniture. You leave it to soak in for a short while and then you can use the little brushes on here to scrub it in really well and then you literally pull back as you were on the carpet and it will suck it up and you can see it being sucked through that clear um, front part there. So it didn't come with any sort of um, power brush on the front. Uh, I think the, the higher up ones in the range did but I think I only paid 120 No, actually, how much did I pay for this? Do you know what? I can't remember now. I think I might have had this directly from Bissell. I might have ordered it from their website and it had to be delivered because it was cheaper at the time for me to do that. And I ordered it with some solution as well, if I think back to that video that I did back then. But that's on the review video I did in 2014, where I was the uh, where I was a bit bigger than I am. I mean, somebody put a comment on my profile that I had lost a load of weight. Yes, I did. But uh, I've put about two stone back on since then, and I can see it coming back on here. It's making my clothes too small for me again, and uh, I know I need to try and lose a bit again, but uh, it's very difficult when you've been big most of your life, and then you lose a load of weight. You sort of put it back on um, afterwards, and it's very difficult to try and keep weight off. But they, they commented on there that um, I'd lost quite a bit of weight, but the original one where I did this video first was in the 2014 run, where I was a lot bigger than I am now. And I did go into the details of how much I paid for this on that video, and also, um, I did, I think it was the unboxing video, did I do an unboxing? Do you know what, I just, I just can't remember. It must be one of these things about getting old that you tend to forget things. Now I know my dad's got uh, Alzheimer's disease, and I just hope, you know, this isn't uh, going to, well, you never know, do you? If your parents have got Alzheimer's, the chances are I might as well. But my memory is terrible for remembering things that happened uh, a fair while back. But there we go, that's the, um, that's the hose on the machine, and then we can wrap it up very, very easily. What I would normally do is to do the carpets first, and then I would probably use the hose on furniture afterwards. And then we can put it back through the, uh, the cable clamp there, and it clamps it nicely in position, like so. So that's the, um, the hose. It uses what uh, Bissell call the tank-in-tank -tank system, and uh, that is this tank down the bottom of here. Now, in order to remove it, you just lift the handle, and then you can pull it out of the back of the machine like this. So what we've got, effectively, is um, two tanks inside here. And the way it, the way it does this is that uh, it has a a sort of what they call a bladder system. You have to first of all pull the handle. When the handle is in the carrying position like that you can carry the bucket without the top dropping off. But as soon as you move the handle, I don't know how much the camera can see here, am I holding it too high? No, I'm not. But like, um, as soon as you move the handle into that position, the top comes off. And inside you have a um, 
a measuring cup, like so. And I think you use three full caps of this per tank, or do you? Do you know what? I can't remember now how many how much of this you have to use. I don't, I don't think it says anywhere on the on the tank. Let's just have a look. Full fill here with measured formula through hot tap water until full. But I can't remember, it says 60 millilitres. So you have to put 60 millilitres in um, in the tank here, which is a 3 litre. But then the measuring cup is measured in fluid ounces. Um, well I know it is on the on the bottles anyway. This is this is the American thing for you, because I don't speak in fluid ounces, I speak in millilitres. Or uh, this says um, 60 millilitres to each 3 litres of hot tap water. And uh, they talk about millilitres, right, on the bottle, and yet the cap is marked in fluid ounces. I mean, how helpful is that really? It's so, alright if you're an American, but in England we don't talk in fluid ounces here. Um, and, I, and I can't remember now how much. 60 millilitres is in fluid ounces. I'm sure there's some Americans that might uh, be able to tell me, but I think what I might do is just use three capfuls in a tank. Maybe wrong, but I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't hang on. What I'm going to just do quickly is go on the internet and find out how many millilitres there are in a fluid ounce. We'll be here in a sec. Okay, so one US fluid ounce is equal to 30 millilitres. So 60 millilitres is two fluid ounces. And I think this cap on here is marked in fluid ounces and it says, yeah, two fluid ounces. I, I can just, whether that's going to focus in. Can we get it to focus on that? But either way about it, it's marked in there and it says that two fluid ounces is up to that line at the top. One and a half is there and then one fluid ounce is down there. So you'd need one full cap of this in the three litres of solution. That's good. I'm uh, pleased to work that out. Otherwise I've been putting far too much of this in. Maybe this is why I got through it so quickly. Because I didn't realise what the conversion was between fluid ounces and millilitres. So anyway, where were we? We're talking about this tank, weren't we? So what the tank has, effectively, is a system where you put your solution in that hole there and it actually fills up like a rubber membrane tank inside here. And when it's full it holds three litres, so effectively that tank is then full of clean water. And then what happens is that um, it draws the solution in from that tank via that drain hole at the bottom which is connected to the bottom of the bladder and as you're extracting it puts the dirty water into the top of the tank here rather than going into the hole there so the dirty water actually goes into the area around this bladder so as the bladder is emptying the tank is then filling up the outside of this with the dirty water and so once the bladder is empty which is something you don't really know because it's not very easily to see, as you're using the machine, how much is left in the bladder. So you've got to be watching the bottom all the time uh, as you're going along to know when it's empty. I think on the higher models in the range, they, um, there was like a, a solution indicator on it or, or some, uh, some way of, of knowing when the solution tank was empty, but it doesn't take long to empty it. It doesn't take long at all. I can get through five or six tanks sometimes on uh, on this room. So 
So obviously when you when you filled it up with the solution, then you put your lid back on and pull your carrying handle and make sure it's secure. It's no good if you um, basically if you knock that handle by mistake. That's what's going to happen. And if that's full of water, <laughs> it's going to be a right mess. So you've got to be careful carrying it. Right, so that's on. And then that goes in the back of the machine, like so. And the handle then clamps down onto the back. Okay, let's uh, have long have we got left? About another eight minutes before we run out of time on this. So let's just have another uh, look at the bottom of the machine then. Okay, so what it has is the, uh, the diverter valve here which basically goes between floor cleaning and tools as I've talked about earlier. So normally on floor cleaning you have it on here so the suction then goes down that way into the bottom. Now it's possible to clean this part out here because that would get dirty. All you'd have to do is pull that away and lift it off the front. And there you can see your suction seal there which goes to the... This is the actual uh, extractor part here where the vacuum comes through on those channels there. But this gets very, very dirty. So when you're finished with it, you need to take this off the machine and wash this out in the sink. So you get all the carpet fibres and fluff and everything off of there. So let's have a look at the underneath of it. On the back here, you've got two pedals. One's your recline pedal which pulls the handle down, and the other one's the on and off pedal there, which turns the machine on and off. OK, now what we've got underneath here, first of all, here's the stock label. So if I focus in on that. Made in China, first thing that you notice. So although it's an American company, they make everything in China. OK, er... Uh, there's your stock label. Underneath here we have the power brush. The power brush is mounted on springs so that it can move up and down inside the cleaner to adjust itself to the carpet. Um, it has little side brushes here which don't really do a lot in my opinion. I suppose it's for getting up against skirting boards but these the, the static brushes never seem to do very much. Even on vacuum cleaners, they don't really serve much of a purpose. But basically, as you're going along, this is down on the carpet and it's grooming the pile. I'm just wondering now, is there a switch to turn this off? I don't think there is, actually. But um, obviously, when, when you've finished using the machine, it's always uh, an idea just to turn this over and clean all the bottom off. Because as you can see, I didn't do that last time, and there's, there's bits of uh, crap all over the bottom of here. Uh, that's reminded me now, when I've cle finished with it today, I really must try and clean that off. Now it's a belt-driven uh, brush roll, it's not a direct drive. Uh, the belt itself, if we turn it back over again... The belt itself is inside that cover. So you need to get a screwdriver in there and pop that open and that open and that cover lifts off. And the belt access is inside. If you have the instruction manual it tells you how to uh, change the belt anyway and the belts are available from Bissell. So far I've never had to change that belt on there, it still seems to be fairly okay. There is a second belt inside there that uh, drives the pump. Now I don't know whether I can get a screwdriver and pop that off. It should have just enough time to do that, so I'll just see if I can find a screwdriver. There we go. Just to show the belts inside. It says, uh, unsnap here first. That's one. And then that one there, and then it lifts off. Like so. And then what we've got inside is the belts. Now, uh, well, well, there's a belt on there. That's the actual motor spindle. And what that does, 
Yeah, there's not a lot of light in here, is there? Let's get a torch. So, there's the belt, and we can see that the belt is joined onto that uh, pulley down the bottom there. Now that is actually the uh, solution pump, that one is. And then on the back of here, underneath that cover there, is another belt that goes from that pulley to the uh, brush roll. So it actually has two drive belts on this machine. So it's possible, but it's rather difficult to replace these belts because you'd have to take all this to pieces to do it. So if this one here got stretched, it's like the clutch system on a Dyson where you have one belt and then another belt. Uh, the Sebo Automatic X4 has a similar system where you've got one belt onto one pulley and then a, from that pulley onto another one. But basically, yes, that's your uh, belt system. And there we can see inside the solution pipes as well. Um, I mean, the belt seems to have reasonable tension on there. It doesn't really have to drive a lot of uh, something that's going to stretch it too quickly. But I'm hoping I don't have to change that anytime soon because it'll be a right ball ache today. Right, so we just put that cover back on and clip it down. That's, that's very easy to do as well. So that was that's the belt drive. We've talked about the uh, solution. We've talked about the the tank in tank system here. So obviously, when, once you're using it and pushing it along, it's not very easy to see how much solution's left inside that bladder. It really isn't. That's one of the big problems I have with this machine: is not knowing when the dirty water tank's full and that's empty because you can't really see very much from the outside of here because it's like an opaque tank. Now this is the, this is that uh, valve, this, this, that suction port that I talked about earlier on and you can see as we move the handle slightly how that breaks that contact there look. When it's sitting in the upright position normally that pulls itself together and those two rubber seals join each other. But if you're tugging on the hose and you're pulling it backwards, you can see how that pulls that away and then you're going to lose suction to the hose. So you always need to be pulling the machine forwards towards you or having the machine in that position and use the hose going that way so that you're not forever breaking that seal apart. Okay. So it would seem that uh, the brush on this always rotates. There's no way to turn the brush off because the brush is linked to the solution pump on it. So even when you're extracting and you're not pumping solution, that brush is still going to be going round and you can see the brush underneath there. But it does, like I say, move up and down inside the machine. So let's put this on. So what we have to do is engage those tabs in those holes at the bottom both sides and then click that shut like so and I haven't done it properly this this is this is always tricky so I'll just have to tip it back slightly I think engage the holes in the lugs in the holes and that's it now it's gone on now it's gone on. So it's got nice big wheels on the back there, uh, so you can wheel it along nice and easily. We've gone into the power switch um, there, and there's the there's your recline, the tank in tank, the hose, the tool on the end, and this part on the top of the handle. That's your solution release trigger. So as you're uh, pulling it. Um, I'd say as you're pushing it forwards, you would hold that to lay the uh, the solution down, and then as you pull it back, you uh, let go, and then it extracts the solution. And on the front, we can see the name of the machine. It's the Bissell Clean View Power Brush with Microban Antibacterial Protection. So there we go. That's the quick having, uh, having a look session of it, and uh, we'll be back again very shortly with the demonstration when I'm going to start using it. So see you then.